Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, this week many of the world's leaders have descended on New York for the General Assembly of the United Nations and as usual, it's dominated by the US and its allies and their globalist agenda. That said, there appears to be a groundswell of support from the majority of countries in the world for the reform of the United Nations, particularly one of its major institutions, the UN Security Council. Now, the UN Security Council has 15 members, with five of them who are permanent members, and they are China, France, Great Britain, Russia and the USA. The other 10 members are elected to serve two-year terms and a new 10 will be elected at this year's assembly. Now, Russia has presented its proposal for reform of the United Nations Security Council. In the view of Sergei Lavrov, the uh, Security Council should be expanded to include countries that represent the interests of Asia, Africa and Latin America. Now, this is at odds with the US position, no wonder, which is to add another Western power to its French and British vassals on the committee. Now, all members of the Council do recognise the necessity for the organisational reform that Russia has voiced its opposition to the proposed expansion of the Council to include Germany and Japan. Now, the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has stated that the international body does not need additional members from NATO, the EU or other countries and vassals that are subservient to the United States. He stated that the inclusion of those countries would only serve to exacerbate the existing imbalance and injustice that is obvious and is prevalent throughout the organisation. Plus, the Russian government is prepared to endorse the admission of India or Brazil to the Security Council as permanent members. Plus, Russia has put forth a proposal to satisfy African aspirations. I mean, Lavrov specified the collective positions have already been established on the continent regarding that issue and Russia respects the consensus of the African Union. Now, in general, the senior Russian diplomatic mission noted that developing countries are still woefully underrepresented in the UN Security Council. He said it's therefore recommended that the main focus of the efforts to expand the Council should be on satisfying them and looking after the interests of Asia, Africa and Latin America and not adding more members who represent the fading power and influence of the G7. Now, it's noteworthy that some Western representatives have expressed reservations about the necessity of Russia's membership in the UN Security Council. I mean, the, the Polish Foreign Minister has questioned the merits of Moscow's acquisition of a permanent seat in the wake of the dissolution of the Soviet Union. I mean, the US permanent resident, re, representative Linda Thomas-Greenfield has also supported Ukraine's right to, uh, for Russia to be excluded from the agency. <laughs> now, that just shows you how farcical the US position is on everything. Meanwhile, Russia and the West have differing views on the reform of the Security Council, but not only in regard to the increase in its per number of permanent members. But now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, uh, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, which can be done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen on the right hand side. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me and I'm thanking you all now just for watching. Now in an interview with TASS, this is a, a Russian news agency, uh, Sergei Lavrov expressed his reservations about France's intention to limit the right of veto in this UN Security Council. He believes that Paris, probably quite rightly, actions are a manifestation of its hypocrisy and are aimed at creating an external effect mainly trying to sideline Russia and remove some of its power. I mean, France is just being hypocritical, which is not exactly something new now, is it? Now, Lavrov also pointed out that Britain and the United States have a dual stance on this matter. What he means is Britain does exactly what it's told to do by the US, like a good little lapdog it is. However, London and Washington 
are prepared to p support those who wish to accelerate the debate on the potential reform of the veto right. Again, they basically want to um, silence and sideline Russia. I mean, France is the major proponent of that. And obviously, they want to see the discontent with the arbitrary actions of uh, NATO members. I mean, whenever the West has been involved in uh, what is a developing crisis, the outcome has been less than optimal. That's a good way of putting about how much chaos has the US unleashed around the world since the end of the Cold War. Serbia, Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Libya. Cool. I mean, there's th hundreds of thousands of victims, widespread devastation and significant social economic challenges Lavrov noted. He also highlighted the actions of the United States and its allies demonstrate a lack of respect for the fundamental principles of the UN Charter, namely the sovereign equality of states. He says it's imperative that the United Nations Security Council be reformed without delay. I mean, since the middle of the last century, the world has moved on from the model that was put together in Yalta, and it's undergone significant changes. He says, the prevailing structure is no longer unipolar, but multipolar. And discussions regarding the members or permanent members have been going on since the conclusion of the Cold War. However, the countries that currently hold the right of veto are unwilling to relinquish their privileges. I mean, both the United States and Russia recognise the necessity to expand the number of members of the Security Council. But the US is in favour of including its allies, namely Germany and Japan, in the Reform Security Council. Now, it's understandable why the US wants the G7 members, Germany and Japan as members. Ask yourself, what's the largest military base in Europe? Well, it's Ramstein in Germany. And it's been an American home as for the end of the Second World War, yeah, Germany still occupied by the US 79 years after the end of the Second World War. And that's not the only base in Germany. I mean, the Soviet Union left East Germany and went back across the Russian border, and the US are still there. Now, it's the same in Japan, with Okinawa as a huge base in Japan, and again, 79 years after the war, Japan is still occupied. So if you're going to add Germany and Japan, the other vassals, to the Great Britain and France, you're going to have a large majority of US lap lapdogs with negligible influence in the world doing the bidding of the US. Now, Russia's seeking to have the BRICS countries in included in the Security Council, while France and Britain are turned are seeking to stay in the position and re for preventing reform from moving forward. I mean, it's obvious France or nor Great Britain are prepared to accept their fading powers with little to no influence in the world. In fact, they're just vassals. Russia's fundamental position is the Security Council be aligned with the realities. And that's according to Timothy Bordachev, who's the programme director of the Valdai Discussion Club. I mean, he believes the status of the permanent members of the Security Council should not be granted to Berlin and Tokyo. He says it's evident that these countries lack any form of support. Their foreign policy is largely influenced and dictated by the United States. I mean, the debate surrounding the United States um, Council is going on, but it's not a pressing issue. Uh, primary issues is the West's action, which have resulted in international confrontation. Potential or alterations to the organisation are a topic under discussion and will develop as a new mutual understanding is achieved between the world's largest states. Now, in regard to Sikorsky's reservations about Russia's eligibility for the take the USSR seat on the European circuit, the Polish Foreign Minister should be evaluated by professionals in the field of psychiatry, Bordyshov added with a touch of irony. I mean, do remember, Sikorsky, Sikorsky is married to Anne Applebaum, who's a US neocon and a so-called journalist and a serious Russophobe. Now, Sikorsky has also praised the US for blowing up Nord Stream and wants to shoot down Rus Russian missiles over Ukraine. Yeah, Bordyshev is correct. Sikorsky is a certified madman. 
Now, the concept of a security council was first mooted at the conclusion of World War II, according to Stanislav Tychenko, who's a professor of European studies at the St. Petersburg University of International Relations. Initially, there were the five participants, the USSR, the USA, Britain, China, uh, and France. Now, he said that the UN reform was discussed in the 90s following the conclusion of the Cold War. Well, I've mentioned that already. Now, times have changed and discussions have also become more frequent. There are a number of uh, questions that need to be addressed in regard to the current UN Security Council. In particular, the issue affects Britain and France. For the past few decades, their re representatives of these countries have been voting in unison with the United States. Tchenko went on to say that while the United States has on occasion extended its veto, it's never done so in favour of anything other than its own narrow interests. And the British and the French have always voted with the USA. <laughs> well, it's no surprise there. Consequently, the Russian position is to expand the Security Council by including truly sovereign states. Now, India is the front runner on the list of potential candidates for obvious reasons. It's the most populous country on the planet, and it will be, along with China, the main engine of global economic development in the next 30 years. Now, the issue of granting Delhi the status of a permanent member uh, of the Security Council is of great importance to both uh, Russia and the United States, and there's no disagreement between them on this matter. I mean, however, the proposal might be delayed uh, by China for the time being. Ultimately, Beijing will concede, says Tchenko. The second candidate for consideration is Brazil. It's evident that the Western Hemisphere should have another representative in the UN Security Council more than just the US, although the US is actually represented by France and, um, and the UK. So... Uh, it already has effectively. Furthermore, Brazil actually demonstrates a commitment to pursuing its own national interests and stands up to pressure from the Washington. So it's anticipated that maybe a third candidate will be from Africa, where the population of the continent is expected to grow from 1.5 to 2.5 billion people over the next 30 years. I mean, the African economy uh, as a whole is going to expand at an accelerated rate. So it's uh, therefore evident that Africa should at least be um, represented. Now, the earlier proposal that the continent could be represented on the Security Council by the African Union is an elegant proposal, but it's unlikely to attract a significant number of allies because the organisation is still perceived as not being particularly active. And that may raise questions about its political subjectivity. Therefore, it seems their confidence could be represented by perhaps Nigeria or maybe even Ethiopia, one of the largest economies. I mean, there's some progress on um, EU, uh, UN reform, and that, but I think we're going to have to wait till the conclusion of the Ukraine conflict. I mean, these events are linked chronologically, one follows another. I mean, after the Napoleonic Wars, the Vienna model emerged. After the First World War, there was the Versailles system and the League of Nations. And after the Second World War came the United Nations. The current situation, uh, which began as a special military operation by Russia and the UK, has evolved into a significant confrontation between the West and the Moscow. Once the military actions have concluded and a favourable outcome for Russia, it's going to be in a position to highlight the fact that the majority of the countries in the world are unrepresented in the United Nations system and organisations such as the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank and others. And it needs to be addressed. In con contrast uh, the, with the West, Russia has a contingency plan in place. Now that plan uh, is to create a similar structure without the involvement of the US and its allies based on BRICS. That's BRICS is the future. The two initiatives, the discussion about reforming in the UN and the strengthening of BRICS are proceeding in parallel. Now, Moscow is keen to not give up its UN membership, but it's going to use that membership. That's as the foundation of international law and the security 
Council is a forum where the major powers engage in direct dialogue to manage their relations. I mean, the only obstacle to its progress is a lack of a constructive agenda, and that's driven by the US. Well, Russia's optimistic that this will emerge in the BRICS, thereby by establishing BRICS as a general alternative to the Security Council. So, that's my take on what's going on in the UN and the BRICS and how things are going. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen. Don't forget the, uh, the comments section. I love to get your comments. I love to read your comments and I love to respond to them. So I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.